So after a uh, great reading at the Walt Whitman series, thanks again for coming. I uh, appreciate having you here. Um, as a fellow writer, I have a couple of questions uh, about to embark on my MFA uh, journey. Um, what advice do you have for writers in this kind of blogging century? Um, um, it's it's hard because because uh, your, your natural instinct is to say, obviously we, we we write not because of the kind of like short term format that blogging allows you to, but because when you when you're writing fiction, short stories, or novels, you have time to really invest in the kind of the complexity of characters and. And I have a hard time seeing how that's possible um, in blogging. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't blog or that you can't blog, but that in the end, like the novel or the story, they exist um, because of their ability to be complicated, because of their, their, their depth to which they can do that. And I, I don't know how much we can do that in those sort of short-term formats, but at the same time, we need them. Um, it's kind of different. Uh, it's a different game. It's a different world, which is sort of a lame thing to say. But, um, but I already feel like, you know, 33 years old, and I feel kind of out of it already. Fair enough. I'm um, 22, I feel out of it as well. But um, uh, going back to, I guess, identifying yourself as a writer or identification at all, uh, you spoke a lot about, um, I guess, the formation of one's identity and what it means to be an individual and uh, kind of, you know, you're no longer defined as an ethnicity or a race or anything of the sort or culture. You know, you're just an individual. How do you, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that this is a good turn? That there's no more uh, like have we finally achieved the uh, the cerebral state of like individuality, or is it still? Um, yeah, I, I actually think we've achieved it. I think it's actually you almost have to insist on it more so now than than ever before because there are so many different voices and so many different ranges, and so it's even more desirable I think for people to want to kind of like create little categories and boxes that say well this is this particular voice that's this ethnic voice um, but I think by and large the idea of, of, of a writer is to not we might write out of our own personal unique experiences but we always do so with the idea that the characters that we create the stories we write are greater than those particular individual experiences they become universal once we give them that life so for me it's it's a matter of insisting upon um, not wanting to have a category or a box that kind of defines my work or my identity. I don't write out of an ethnic perspective or personal historical background. No. Um, the idea of the journey um, was pretty present in your last novel. Um, I think it was in the New York Times who had said that it was almost like a Kerouacian idea of, of uh, a journey which wasn't just for the fun of it but for no. finding things out. Uh, you mentioned tonight that you return to Ethiopia occasionally, and uh, I was reading another interview where you had mentioned, or rather it was an interview of something you wrote where you were saying you visited your grandmother, and there was the picture of, uh, I think it was an out-of-place photo of your father with a moose and uh, mountains. And um, how do you feel now, again, as this individual you know, person who is outside of fiction who is just you know, yourself no. you know um, do you think that individuals have these same journeys that characters have or is it easier for one to embark on this journey as a character um, I think you know you create characters so they can maybe sometimes go on those journeys for you um, obviously I think you know there's the, the idea of a journey is always but the idea that there's something lost that's trying to be recovered or searched for um, it might not be something that's actually tangible or that can actually be recovered but we do set off on on these trajectories in our lives because we're, we're hoping to find something. Um, and sometimes I can't personally always go on like the long epic journeys that my characters do. Um, but at the same time, I can set them out into the world and I can sort of try to see um, how in their search of, you know, discovery or their search for, for kind of an identity and a home and existence that makes them at peace. Um, probably in the end, it was always going to kind of mirror my own expeditions, your own searches. Um, it may not be the physical one that you take, but it's still always the emotional one. Uh, another question. Um, this one's dealing with gentrification. Uh, it was definitely present in your your first novel, and uh, you know Jonathan Franzen's novel uh, Freedom d sort of dealt with gentrification in more of a misappropriated, you know, ironic way. Um, 
Do, do you feel that this is uh, an issue that is going to lead on to uh, graver consequences in America? Do you think that there's eventually going to be, be people who are displaced, like first world refugees, yeah. so to speak? Yeah. I mean, cause I think that is what we sort of say gentrification, but also kind of shorthands for people like losing their homes. Um, and, uh, you know, some of it is kind of economic improvement, but the end result is that people are, are losing their ability to live in their communities. And... You know, writing about gentrification in my first novel, I, I found it bizarrely to echo kind of the process of migration that happens out of conflict in Africa as well. This idea that people are being forced to flee their homes, whether it's because of violence or economics, the fleeing is still the same. You know, the sort of end result is that you don't have a place to live anymore, a home to call your own. Um, it what matters most now is how we respond to that. You know, we can't kind of constantly... Uh, we can't occupy everything. We can't keep taking over new homes and new spaces. Um, there will have to be a place for people to be able to live and they will have to be able to feel like they can live humanely in their countries and in their cities. Um, I think partly what we're seeing now is a frustration with that, that they can't, that you can't actually subsist the way you were supposed to be able to. And then returning back to uh, literature, uh, when you mentioned the brothers Karamazov in that novel, uh, is there some kind of intertextual uh, link that I missed <laughs> or is, is um, and also no. bringing that question even further, you know, furthering the trajectory of it. Uh, do you find that intertextuality becomes something that you uh, bring to your novels, or is it more of a subliminal thing, or not subliminal? Rather, is it unintentionally there, or is it an intentional, you know, reference of? Um, I think you know the 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 the, the brothers comes up entered that first novel because it was a novel that I always felt profoundly attached to. Um, also because the very end of the novel seemed to kind of to me express something quite fan- fabulous and beautiful and simple and um, and uh, necessary. And so I think the novel found its way into the book just because of that desire to kind of go back to that text and go back to that particular moment in the novel where um, the, all these sort of beautiful emotions without giving it away to anybody. Um, and so I don't, I don't, I don't think I write with the idea of wanting to always kind of reference this text, but I know these texts are always sitting in my head. Um, by and large, I know there's tons of kind of like echoes and moments in when I'm writing that I know I'm deliberately kind of referencing in, you know, a book or a novel or a poem. Um, but I don't think the reader will sort of ever be aware of those things because they, they exist probably for my own pure pleasure and my own need. Um, it's not with the desire of kind of like wanting to have these books in dialogue publicly, but they are very much for me in dialogue. They're always in conversation with another books. And so um, that first book I think of as very much in conversation with Brothers Karamazov, Dante, and with V.S. Naipaul. Um, and the second book I think of as kind of really indebted to Rilke and the Duino Elegies and, um, and William Carlos Williams as well, actually. And uh, when you write, is there anything that you ever want to aspire to? Not so much emulate, but to uh, pay a uh, homage to... You know, is there any one particular author or one particular piece that you feel you're striving to be the, the 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 son of or the spawn of? Uh, no, I don't. Want, I don't want to be the spawn of anything. I think <laughs> it always sounds like very X-rated. Uh, um, no, I think I think I'm 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 always aware of the kind of like literary precedents that sort of precede your work and um, your ability to kind of, you know, not you don't want to mirror them or echo them. You just want to make sure that you continue hopefully to have the same level of complexity and depth as the work that you kind of admire and that you love. Um, whether or not you actually achieve that is a whole other question, but um, there are certain novels that's kind of like you hold up as as being um, similar in their kind of um, concern maybe as, as to your own, but not because you want to recreate those experiences, but you know that there was a book that somebody um, strove for something that you feel quite attached to. All right, well, thank you for coming again.